All right, today is day 51 of my 100 days of keto chow only. Um, still going really well. Uh, I keep on getting questions from people who are just discovering that I'm doing this experiment, so I wanted to answer some of the questions that people have. Number one, I am drinking only keto chow for three meals a day, which is all of my meals. Um, each one's designed to be a third of all of my daily nutrients, including vitamins and minerals and protein and fat. So a third of each, well, that means I do three a day. Um, right now, I am in a science phase where I'm using controlled variables. Um, I'm only using heavy cream for the fat source. Um, starting March 1st, I will be using just avocado oil for my fat source. Um, two weeks later, I'll be doing avocado oil with MCT oil. And two weeks after that, and to finish up the experiment, I'll be doing just butter, which will require me to use one of the savory flavors of keto chow that's designed to be mixed up hot. That'll be really interesting. So why am I doing all of this? Well, okay, so number one, um, the primary goal, or the first goal, I guess you could say, with doing this experiment was, hey, I wanted to lose weight. That's worked out really well. I'm down almost 26 pounds now since February, no, January 2nd. Um, my city is doing a weight loss challenge and I'm currently, as of last week, so not currently, as of last week, I was in eighth place of percentage of body weight lost. So that's not bad. The last time I did this, it was a lot easier because not as many people knew about keto then. Anyway, um, also last time I did it, I, I didn't exactly cheat. I just went off keto before the challenge started, which made me gain a bunch of uh, glycogen weight. And so, yeah, not exactly cheating, but still. Anyway, this time I stayed on keto because I didn't want to deal with uh, all the carb junk. So losing weight, that was the number one thing I was trying to do. Um, also, my wife wanted to do P90. Um, work out in the morning. Well, that's 90 days long. Okay, 100 isn't that far off, so I figured I'd just do 100 days of, of keto chow only. Um, I had previously, uh, several years ago, did a 100 days of keto, but it wasn't just keto chow, and I wasn't really able to keep my blood ketones up and wasn't ex exceptionally successful. Um, I stayed keto, but um, this time around I'm doing only keto chow, um, I'm tracking my blood ketones, and for the most part, I've been above 2.0, sometimes up into the 4s on my blood ketones, which it's not really something to aspire to, but it's interesting. For instance, when someone, I mentioned that I uh, don't have a problem with diet soda, and someone's like, a diet soda? And I'm like, look, if my blood ketones are over 2.5, you can easily tell that what I'm doing really works for me. So, haters gonna hate. Leave me alone. Uh, anyway, um, I guess that's another thing. I'm not do just doing only keto chow. I'm doing only keto chow for all of my calories. Drinking diet soda. Um, I'm also using the fish oil pills um, that are recommended if you're doing uh, three meals of keto chow a day. Um, taking magnesium, that sort of stuff. Let's see. Um, yeah, so I wanted to yeah lose weight. And another major reason for doing this is I wanted to prove a point. Um, the point being that you can survive off of keto chow. Um, I represent to everyone that keto chow is nutritionally complete. And I, I like to say that it would, I feel it would be disingenuous to not do this, but another way of saying it is, I don't know of any other company that makes a meal replacement, whether it's keto or not. And I know of no other company that makes a keto product where the founder or founders or CEOs or whatever have you, president of the company, has actually gone so far as to live for an extended period of time on their product. The closest I've ever found was uh, the founders of Nui, back then it was called Keto Cookie, 
um, they did an experiment where they only ate their cookies for a week just to see what would happen. They got into ketosis. Um, by the end of it, it they, it's kind of funny, they start their video off with a clip of, I don't remember if it's Victor or Christopher, I think it's Victor, um, eating one of the cookies, and he's like, oh, I just gagged a little. <laughs> They're like, well, just don't think about it. He's like, I've already got six of these in my stomach right now. <laughs> because they were you know, getting all of their calories from their cookies. Well, again, just to prove a point that you can indeed achieve ketosis eating their cookies. That's a really cool experiment. Uh, but they only did it for seven days because theirs is not designed to be complete nutrition. You're not supposed to be able to do it for an extended period of time, for months on end, whereas that is the design of Keto Chow. Now, that's not to say that you have to... Oh, man, my nose itches. That, that's not to say that you have to eat only Keto Chow. Um, some people get hung up on that. They think, well, Chris is only doing Keto Chow. I guess that means I have to only do Keto Chow, and that's their meal plan. No, 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 no. Keto Chow is designed to make keto, a ketogenic diet easy. It's not designed to... Man, my whole face itches now. It's not designed to be the only thing that you ha that you can eat. If you want to, you can do Keto Chow one meal a day, or one meal a day every other day, or once in a while, or you can do two meals a day. That's what I typically will do when I'm not doing a crazy experiment like I'm doing right now. Um, I'll do grab Keto Chow for breakfast and for lunch, and then I will eat dinner with my family. Um, my wife right now is doing very similar to that, because she doesn't, when, when neither of us are eating regular food, the kids, well, they, they're kind of left to fend for themselves. I mean, we cook food for them. I made salmon last night, even though I didn't eat any of it. But it's, it's difficult to remember that you need to cook food for the kids when your meals are already taken care of. So she doesn't want to leave the kids to fend for themselves. That's great. So um, anyway, so you can just do Keto Chow two meals a day. You can do it three meals a day. If you got jaw surgery and you wanted to maintain a ketogenic diet and you had no other choice, you could entirely live that way. Um, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, we also, I have a friend, uh, Beverly, she's been posting her experiences. Um, she is not a six foot tall man. She is a five foot something woman. And she is, uh, yesterday she posted her experience on the seven weeks or so, maybe six weeks, I don't know, of doing just keto chow for all three meals. Um, she wasn't expecting to lose weight. She thought that she was at a, a really reasonable weight and was planning on, you know, just seeing how it went. But surprisingly, she's gone down from 130-something to 120-something. Um, she had previously lost a lot of weight doing keto and doing keto chow. Um, but it's been interesting for her, and you should really check out our blog, uh, ketochow.xyz slash blog, um, for her full write-up and everything that she's experienced so far. It's, it's interesting getting her perspective as opposed to mine. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, I wanted to prove a point that you could entirely live off of keto chow. Um, and I wanted to do science. Um, I actually, I might have already said that. Anyway, um, by, in this phase that I'm in right now where I'm doing just heavy cream and then I'm going to be doing avocado oil and everything like that, that allows me to tightly control the variables. Um, I was going to ramp up and down or ramp up or ramp down, uh, the amount of calories that I'm getting per day, but I actually think I'm going to peg it where I'm at right now and see what that does, just to control one variable. Um, in this case, uh, the only variable that's going to be changing is the type of fat that I'll be using. Um, I want to see what that does to my lipid system, I want to see what that does to my weight loss, I want to see if maintaining the same amount of calories every day for one, well, it won't be for the full 100 days because the first 42 days the calories were varying a bit. Um, but going forward, yeah, I think I'll just be hitting the same. It's about 1,900 or so at calories a day, uh, or maybe 1,800. I don't remember. I should do the math again. It's in chronometer. I don't have my phone with me. I do have my challenge coin. Hey, Steve, you got your challenge coin? I do. Dang. If Steve didn't have his challenge coin, he would have to give me 10 push-ups right now. 
Oh, he keeps his in his wallet. That's cheating! <laughs> oh, hey, Chris. Yeah. You did say you didn't want to do push-ups the other day when Max asked you if you had your coins. Oh, so I did have my coin. Oh, you I, didn't I, I tell had him it. you had it? I, I did tell him later. Okay, because that's like say, getting out of it. I did say, oh, by the way, Max, sure. I do have my coin. <laughs> I did order three more, so now all the girls are going to Okay, there too. you go. Um, it's a military tradition, apparently. At least Steve tells us that it's a military tradition. My brother gave it to me. Okay, I haven't corroborated that story yet. Um, for all I know, it's just an excuse to get us to do push-ups, but Steve gave me one, so now I have to carry it everywhere, or else I have to do push-ups if he presents his and I don't have mine. So, uh, one of my daughters tried to get me to do push-ups in a, a grocery store checkout line. I guess I should go back and you should do, it. do makeup push-ups. Yeah, it's not fair. I did do a lot of push-ups yesterday for the P90. Anyway, so... She wasn't there. No, she wasn't there. No, she was. She was just upstairs. So, back to the science. Um, so, by... When I'm, okay, so right now I'm doing the heavy cream. The purpose of the heavy cream is, well, number one, it tastes absolutely delicious. Um, in fact, I had a shower thought this morning that um, all of my protein is coming from milk protein isolate. All of my fat is coming from heavy cream, and the few carbs that I'm getting is also coming from cream, which means I am getting, aside from the vitamins and minerals that are in Keto Chow, all of my calories that I'm consuming right now and next week as well are all coming from dairy. I am the, I'm s sustaining myself off of the byproducts of ruminant agriculture and the fermentation of uh, grasslands. That's cool. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, right now I'm doing the heavy cream. Um, heavy cream is very high in saturated fat. That's the primary fat that you'll find in it. And in previous tests that I've done and in all of the data I've seen from, for instance, Michael Eads, he gave a talk last year at Breckenridge about um, how different fats are oxidized in your, in your uh, mitochondria. And there's actually, there's a um, mathematical equation that you can use to figure out how optimal a fat is for human energy production. And almost without fail, all of the best fats are saturated fats. And saturated ha fats have a really bad name. All that saturated fat means is that all of the carbon chains are saturated with hydrogen. So you don't have any double bonds between the hydrogen atoms, like carbon atoms, um, which means that you have a very stable fat. And in the longer chains, those tend to, when it gets cold, it tends to form kind of a solid or a semi-solid. Um, Whereas the shorter chain ones, the, um, like uh, C8 and C10, the, which are called medium chain triglycerides, or MCTs, uh, those ones usually stay liquid no matter what. Um, whereas if you have a monounsaturated fat, which is what I'll be using when I switch to the avocado oil. And now avocado oil is interesting because it's mostly monounsaturated, but it does have some saturated and some polyunsaturated. And monounsaturated just means that one of the spots in the carbon chain, instead of having instead of it being saturated with hydrogen, you have a double bond between two of the um, carbons. Now that makes, instead of having a nice straight line, it kinks it just a little bit. And that kinkiness, whoa, um, makes kinkiness. it so that the, the fat, when it's at a lower temperature, usually stays liquid. Um, now, avocado oil, my wife has noticed this, if she mixes up keto chow using avocado oil only, sticks it in the fridge, a lot of times you'll end up with a little layer of solidified or semi-solidified saturated fat, just because it gets low enough and those tend to solidify. But then you shake it up really good and it goes away and everything's fine. Um, monounsaturated fats, they're not quite as good as saturated fats, especially on a ketogenic diet. And the American Heart Association, which is wrong about just about everything, um, will say that saturated fats are bad for you. Okay, I disagree. Anyway, um, now monounsaturated fats um, are usually comes from fruits. Uh, well, or rather, yeah, monounsaturated fats. Uh, for instance, avocados are a fruit. Olives are a fruit. And those two oils 
are probably the better ones you're ever going to see that are high in monounsaturated fats. Now you also have high oleic sunflower oil, which is kind of like um, olive oil and avocado oil in that it's very high in a monounsaturated mono fat, but it's been designed to have very, very low saturated fat. And it also has a very low polyunsaturated fat, which I'll get to in just a second. But the, the takeaway is, if you believe the American Heart Association that you shouldn't have saturated fat, and you want to have a lot of monounsaturated fat, well then, high oleic sunflower oil is a logical what you would use. But I like saturated fat. I want as much as I can, which is why right now I'm doing sat, um, heavy cream. But when I do the uh, avocado oil phase, I'll be doing mostly a monounsaturated to see if it spikes my triglycerides again. Um, anyhow, yeah, so polyunsaturated fats, that's where instead of having a single double bond, you have multiple double bonds. Um, usually you have three or six or nine, like omega-3, omega-6s, and omega-9s. Imagine that. I wonder where that comes from. Um, now the problem with the double bonds is that that's an unstable bond. Um, what, what the two carbon atoms like to do is they like to split open and oxygen likes to insert itself into there. And that is where you get the oxidized oil or the rancid oil. If you've ever opened up a jar of uh, like, not, well, soybean oil, or which is just usually called vegetable oil, or another processed industrial seed oil, um, that if you get that rancid smell, that is the fats that have oxidized they create uh, reactive oxygens, they call them reactive, reactive oxygen species. They're also called free radicals. It's bad stuff. Um, it causes all sorts of problems. Uh, last year I did an uh, experiment where I did really, really high polyunsaturated fats for a week. Uh, my plantar fasciitis came back after just a few days. It took a long time to go away. My inflammation went through the roof. Um, a lot of people think that dairy causes inflammation. It's got nothing on polyunsaturated fats. So I will not be um, repeating that phase of the, of the experiment this year because no way. <laughs> I'd rather eat carbs again, which I did last year, and I'm not going to do that part again either. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on. That's what I'm doing in this experiment. That's why I'm doing this experiment. Miriam wants to get back to work, but I'm shooting this video right by her desk, and so she can't say anything. And there's her hand. <laughs> because it, she's got this cool backdrop, and so, anyway, I'm just about done, and I will see you all on day 52.